Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you to this extremely delayed episode of Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader, where we are finally, hopefully if all things go smoothly, going to arrive at Kiavagama. We've spotted the Kranach system, so we know we're headed in the right direction. We know exactly where we need to end up. It's just a matter of ending up there in one piece. Now, before we dive into gameplay today, folks, I just want to quickly and sincerely apologize for the delay of this episode. It's obviously never part of the plan, but uh, this last week has been somewhat wild in my life. Last weekend, I uh, lost one of my major hard drives, and fortunately, I do keep backups, but restoring multiple terabytes of data is quite the uh, feat. Then, come Monday, I suffered a pretty bad injury, which has made playing video games quite painful. Fortunately, I am mending from said injury, but it is a horrifying one <laughs> that is slowly fixing. And then, on Monday, I lost power, and I did not have electricity Monday or Tuesday. And as you can imagine, recording videos is extremely difficult without electricity. So, this whole week has been a horrible mess. We're back online now. We should be back on track with a regular schedule, but I do apologize for the rather haphazard week I've been having and uh, the fact that this episode is a little late as a result. I hope you'll find it in your heart to forgive me, and I hope the Emperor will protect me in my real life with this injury and just all this bad luck I've been having, but also in this game as we explore some of these starship remains and yes, make our way over to Kiavagama and uh, whatever... Uh, Whatever horrible things have been uh, festering there. Over to these starship remains first, just to see what uh, we might have available here. Nothing, uh, nothing worthwhile. We got seven exquisite xenoblades, but they just count as common items, my goodness, and uh, some caustic bomb as well. Let's go ahead and pack it all as cargo. As many of you have been suggesting, I might actually consider, yes, going back to footfall to do some trading and maybe acquiring some more uh, mobile extractium as well. Some of you have pointed out, uh, I forget which resource it was exactly, but uh, it was, right, adamantium that we have nine units of, and maybe if we get it up to ten, there is actually a colony upgrade that I'll be able to invest in, so that's something to uh, maybe spend some mobile extractium on, but yes, then we'll be down to our last one, and I would like to get some of that uh, replenished, though going back to footfall will be a bit of an endeavor. We have quite a ways to go, and I'm curious actually what happens when we backtrack on jumps, because so far, I don't think we've ever had to jump backwards? I can't remember, but uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see what exactly happens uh, when that time comes. Nonetheless, let's take a look at the uh, situation over here. What do we have? This planet is devoid of even the most primitive forms of life. However, the crew has made quite a strange discovery. A mirror lying right in the center of a huge crater. A completely ordinary mirror in a frame by all appearances, in pristine condition. That is extremely suspicious. Anytime I, I, I see mirrors or, or, or anything having to do with uh, vanity in this universe, I think Slanesh. Maybe that's partly a result of like Warhammer fantasy battle influences, but uh, no, you know what? The ideas of perfection and stuff have been in like the Horus Heresy books uh, as well. So no, 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 no. I see mirrors. I see any, any indication of vanity and I think Slanesh. I said Slanesh earlier, right? Yes, I meant Slanesh. If I if I if I if I uh, attributed it to a different god, Slanesh is 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 what I meant. Um, <laughs> take the mirror aboard the ship. Do you take me for a fool? Video game? I know to fear mirrors. Listen, destroy it immediately. I'm not messing around with this thing. The crew blasts the crater, raising a cloud of dust that blocks the auger array, confirming the mirror's destruction is impossible for the time being but it could not have survived such a powerful explosion. Definitely not. I gained some XP. I'm curious what would have happened if we if we actually took that on. That is a very, very strange thing to come across. And uh, truth be told, I don't even like the shape of this uh, little asteroid. It looks very aggressive, very, very pointy, very, very evil. Pull away from that planetoid and head towards this mind world and uh, see what it has to offer us. Begin a scan over here. And what do you got for me? This mining world has been catalogued as normal. No rare or valuable deposits have been detected. Very well, Pascal. Anything else to uh, add to that? Extremely boring planet. <laughs> An extremely boring planet to, uh, to balance the extremely curious discovery on this planetoid over here. Let's go ahead and uh, use that warp travel to get us one step closer to Krennic. So we're at uh, Tenebris Aquae, if I 
scan from here. I should be able to get to Kranach, I imagine. Yes, not the safest trip. Uh, but you know what? Why don't we go ahead and actually spend some of our navigator's insight over here for once to make this trip just a little bit uh, less likely to cause us trouble because it would be nice to engage with the story again. I, I saw a comment from the last episode's comments or perhaps the episode prior with regards to like, hey, this has been fun, but, you know, it'd be nice to see some story progression too. And I do agree. I would like to see what's actually going on uh, at Kiavagama especially. I wouldn't mind engaging in more, uh, you know, more warp incidents but we're so close we're so close i would love to see what's going on uh sooner rather than later at this junction so let's go ahead and reduce the route difficulty not just by one step but by two make it safe and then we'll go ahead and travel and look we have plenty of navigators insight uh accumulated i think we're i think we're safe to spend a little bit now so let's go ahead and uh jump to Kranach and uh, hope for the best looks like yes it is truly safe and let's see uh, what Kranach looks like, and, and let's see if uh, Kiavagama is in one piece, and what's happening there, I suppose. I don't suspect we're going to see anything from out over here, but once we arrive on Kiavagama, I'm, well, I'm extremely suspicious because of the things we've already seen, from that initial uh, derelict void craft to uh, that strange uh, chest that that, uh, that one ship was carrying. Uh, there's There's been a lot of strange stuff coming out of Kiavagama, so I'm very concerned. Big Dissuriata, what do you have to say? Lord Captain, according to telemetry, we are in the system of Kiava Gamma, the main industrial world of the Von Valancius dynasty. However, our astropaths report that attempts to contact Governor Gaprak have been unsuccessful. I'm not even remotely surprised. But wait. The Voxmaster is silent for a few seconds. Lord Captain, a new report. Kiava Gamma is sending a request to exchange data. Should we accept it? Ooh. I don't like the prospect of being hacked. See, look, we spent a lot of time traveling through space, engaging in a variety of events that have made it very clear to us that Kiavagama is compromised. Uh, we don't know to what extent necessarily. We don't know exactly who is compromised and how precisely. But uh, if memory serves me correctly, this, this, it goes quite high up. Let's reply with our own request. I'm not about to accept a transmission without knowing what it might be, you know, without having even the remotest idea what it might be. So let's reply with our own request and uh, see what they have to say. As you command, Lord Captain. The Vox Master switches to a nearby comm channel to relay your instructions to the crew. For several minutes, nothing happens. Lord Captain, reporting. The Manufactorum is ignoring all our requests and continues to send us its own. The longer we do not accept their messages, the stronger and more persistent the incoming signals become. I've... never seen anything like it. Suddenly, a deafening screech erupts from the bridge's Vox system. You hear violent tirades of garbled binary code, like the low chuckles of machinery. Uh, Lord Captain! Interference de 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 detected in the compartment's Vox system. Looks like the bridge is c cut off from the rest of the void ship. What is going on? What is going on? All right, Sector, Carnus Expanse, Region, Cineris Maleficum, Location, Krenak, Material. Picked report on events on the bridge when entering Kiavagama. Recorded by Servo Skull Watcher 16. Every time, every time I come across Roman numerals, as confident as I am in them, I always worry I'm going to screw them up <laughs> while, you know, recording. Um, I got that right, right? Yeah, okay. Always, always get nervous about that. Anyway, start of pick recording. The Void Ship's Bridge. Sounds of working cogitators and officers' footsteps. The everyday scene is interrupted by an ear-splitting beeping sound, followed by lumens going out. In the dim glow of candles and emergency lights, one of the officers in frame cries out. Another falls to her knees, clutching her head. Over the beeping of Vox's, shouts can only just be heard. What's going on? The doors are locked. We've lost contact with all modules. One of the bridge officers turns to the throne. Lord Captain, the Vox stations are malfunctioning and overloading the system. None of our outgoing transmissions are getting through. The incoming ones that do make it are distorted beyond interpretation. Lord Captain gives the order to either decipher the incoming Vox transmissions at all costs or continue sending orders from the bridge and request status updates from the other modules. Well, we know two isn't working, so let's decipher the incoming Vox transmissions at all costs. Proceed. 
A team of decryption experts gets to work. Data tethers are inserted into sockets as they connect to the cogitators. One of the Vox clerics leans over the console. Another is writing something on a piece of parchment, but then she bursts into maniacal laughter and stabs herself in the eye with a steel quill. Another scream. A tech priest, who was mid-prayer, tears himself to pieces with his own mechadendrites. More and more lunatics are mutilating themselves and lunging at others. Portion of picked recording damaged after contact with unknown object. A guard officer shoves a rabid servitor away from the Lord Captain as he rushes to help the crew, shouting out orders, executes one of the lunatics and roars a series of orders to the rest, begins methodically exterminating any who show signs of madness. Do we use our strength with the help of Abelard, our coercive abilities just on our own, or do we methodically exterminate any who show signs of madness? No, 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 no. We must... Let's bark out some orders. Let's execute one of the lunatics and roar a series of orders to the rest using our own coercive capabilities, relying on our own strengths in this uh, rather dire set of circumstances. Success. The madman's body falls at the rogue trader's feet as his commanding voice, magnified by a Vox amplifier, carries over all the noise. He orders the crew to master themselves immediately, promising to personally execute anyone who fails to do so. Some of the lunatics quiet down, others try to snap out of it. One pins her hand to a panel with a dagger to stop herself from moving. Another fervently whispers prayers. Some return to the cogitators, others lean over the wounded. Shots ring out. Those still on a rampage are executed by the rogue trader himself as promised. Scrap code. The voice belongs to the on-deck engine seer who has turned to the Lord Captain from his station. We've been attacked with Scrap Code, a tech heresy designed to corrupt machines. The transmission received from the planet was infected with this taint, and it is now running through the ship's veins. Omnissiah, preserve us. The Voidborn officer appears before the Lord Captain once more. Whatever it is that's attacking us, we have a backup procedure that can circumvent the Vox Barrier. In the atrium, leading to the bridge, there is a terminal for an isolated system that might still be un a loud pop. The pipes over the officers' heads burst, and a blast of hot air flings the Voidborn away from the Lord Captain, his body slamming straight through a cogitator panel. The picked frame spins uncontrollably. The servo skull was jolted by the gust. The picked recorder fogs over, the Vox picking up the crackling of electricity and a death cry. Gas on the bridge! A junior attendant shouts and instantly doubles over, inhaling the poisoned air. The rogue trader gives the order to evacuate immediately, using his persuasive prowess, commands the crew to carry on with their duties until the very last, coercing them instead, or runs for his life from the bridge, using his and Avalar's athletics. No, 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 no. We are no coward with good fortune. We are no Caiaphas Cain. We are the rogue trader, Mr. Rogue Trader himself. We will give the order to evacuate immediately. I've been known to be quite persuasive. Why would I not uh, use that to my advantage now? Evacuate at once. Success. The rogue trader personally oversees the evacuation. Bring the plasma cutters. Get the wounded to the exit. The officers repeat his orders. When the servo skull following the rogue trader reaches the doors, they fall to the plasma cutters and crumble outward. The rogue trader is the last to leave the bridge. Succeeded on a carouse check as well, not one that we picked for. Leaning on a support beam, the rogue trader takes several deep breaths, trying to flush his lungs with air. Then he straightens, smooths his uniform, and heads towards a goal known only to him. The servo skull follows. I hope I didn't accidentally click a second choice there. I didn't feel a double click, but strange, I don't recall asking for a carouse check, nonetheless. The atrium is in a state of panic. Silhouettes skitter about in the dark hall, illuminated only by the flickering of emergency lumens. Curt orders and someone's feverish words of prayer can be heard. Having lost all communication, the beheaded ship is writhing in agony. It takes a while for the Lord Captain to find the cogitator mentioned by the fallen officer. The panel of the isolated terminal is riddled with cracks and bloodstains, and on the floor by the terminal, a tech priest is lying in a heap with his head smashed and technical liquids mixed with bloods oozing out of his ports. The Lord Captain attempts to take his chances restoring the terminal. Succeeded. 
The rogue trader rips the power key off the tech priest's mechadendrite and opens the cover on the terminal. Sparks fly into his face, but he is confident in his manipulation of the tangled wires and clanging levers. After replacing the cover and ensuring that the system is restored, the Lord Captain brings up the required data on the screens. The maintenance module is sending out hundreds of desperate distress calls that have gone unanswered up to now. When the machines went out of control and started turning people insane, others, driven by some hateful and paranoid logic, started butchering the servants of the Adeptus Mechanicus. The tech priests have sustained heavy losses, but the remains of the cult are still holding the line. Out of everything that's happening on the ship, the situation in the maintenance module is the direst. The Lord Captain knows where help is needed most. He decides to either head to the maintenance module himself or send officers to the module where the situation is critical. No, I cannot trust others to handle this business. I must do it myself. He will head to the maintenance module himself. The rogue trader arrives not a moment too soon. The crew, frightened out of their wits, have already cornered the priests of the Omnissiah and are about to execute them. The Lord Captain stands between the angry mob and the tech priests, his sheer presence already giving the crowd pause. Partially cutting off any objections from the crew, the rogue trader orders the officers he gathered on the way here to escort the mutineers out and set up a guard post outside the module, where the tech priests begin to offer desperate prayers to the crippled machine spirits. Return to the bridge. The walk to the bridge is uneventful. The crisis has passed. All the wounded and crippled, the ship nevertheless is returning to its normal operation. Life on the bridge is as bustling as ever, even though the people are surrounded by destruction. The senior officers have the situation under control, and the people have been organized. The emergency crew have already finished repairing the pipes, the technomats are setting up cogitators and consoles, and the healers are bagging up what few corpses there are and examining the wounded. By the comm station, the rogue trader turns to the Voxmaster. Praise the Emperor, you're in one piece, Lord Captain. The situation on board is satisfactory. I was just in the middle of setting up comm channels. Soon, all the Voxcasters will be fully operational. Another man appears in the picked frame. A junior officer, completely out of breath, carrying a heap of scrolls. The Voxmaster nods at him. Ah, here are the reports, Lord Captain. If you find able to return to your station, I can immediately give you a rundown of the state of affairs on the ship. End of picked recording. Gained 203 experience there, and uh, a very, very grim sense of foreboding with regards to what we're going to see at Kiavagama. It's much worse than I'd previously anticipated, and I knew, I just knew in my heart to be suspicious of that incoming... Uh, package, let's call it. Lord Captain! The Voxmaster's voice is quivering with exhaustion. The situation has been brought under control, more or less. It will take some time to eliminate the consequences of the attack completely, but the vessel is capable of motion. You may even be able to conduct a warp jump if you feel we should leave this system. Allow me to bring you up to date. Fortunately, the bridge suffered only minor losses. The reports mention only a few casualties that have already been replaced. Kiavagama went silent after transmitting the harmful signal. I will refrain from sending inquiries to the industrial world to avoid a second attack. I am afraid we have exhausted our options for remote analysis. More information can only be obtained by closing the distance or even sending an away party to the planet's surface. The Vox clicks as Heinrichs joins the channel. Rogue Trader. We haven't managed to discuss the nature of my mission. I was assigned to your entourage for a reason. Time is running out, so I will be brief. I must be present during an expedition to this planet. I trust the greeting we received from Kiavagama has dispelled your doubts about whether the events on the planet require my scrutiny. The crew is awaiting further instructions, Lord Captain. It seems I failed a quest about speaking to Heinrichs. That's okay. That's something I've been planning on leaving for the uh, final build of the game as it is, so I don't mind failing that quest so much. But uh, let's end our dialogue here and, and, and see what the future holds. Take a look at our uh, journal really quickly, and let's take a look at uh, the situation here. So reclaim what was lost. We still need to deal with the disrupted shipments from Kiavagama. That's why we're here in the first place. But uh, let's see our completed quests. Underworld? Nope, that's uh, from a long, long time ago. Uh, what was it called? 
Secrets of the Cult, no Echoes of the Past, Dark Echelons, perhaps? No situation regarding Depot 4, nope, 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 that's not relevant. Echoes of the Past, I don't think this is relevant either. Yeah, no, this is a whole different uh, companion quest that went in a very different sort of way. What uh, what do we fail there? It's it's not a rumor, not an order. Orders are actual, like, you know, deliveries and stuff, which I should actually take a look at. There are opportunities to gain some uh, profit factor and things like that, though. I think there are more important things on our plate right now. Where is... All right, let's, let's get rid of the uh, completed quests. Persona non grata, that still is out there. Uh, this menu does not update properly. This is actually Reclaim What Was Lost. Blades in the Void, Forge a Path to Viabos 6, that's something we learned about uh, only relatively recently. And there's Flame in the Dark. Okay. Oh, this, this screen not working properly always throws me off. Nonetheless, an attempt to establish first contact with Kiavagama in the Kranic system provoked a hostile reaction. The Lord Captain must review the situation on the planet and take necessary steps to reassert the Rogue Trader's control over the industrial world. Make planet fall on Kiavagama. Most of the surface of Kiavagama is covered in ore mining operations. The optimal place to begin the on-world reconnaissance is the planet's largest manufactorum. Sounds good. Sounds good. Ah, here we go. Secrets of the Cult. So we didn't fail the entire quest. We just didn't manage to talk to Heinrichs about the Cult of the Final Dawn. The interrogator has asked the rogue trader to set aside some time for a private conversation. I must have missed that. That's on me, I suppose. But like I said, I'm not really chasing every private conversation. I know we had the one with uh, Cassia a handful of sessions ago. But I'm trying to leave some stuff for the final build of the game. Because I do want to do another playthrough. If people are interested in watching a playthrough of the game when it finally releases in its full form. I do intend to do that on the channel. And it'd be nice to leave some things, you know, unturned and to be discovered as we play our more, uh, let's call it open-minded rogue trader of the future. Nonetheless, Heinrichs possesses information about some of the plans of the Cult of the Final Dawn, plans connected to the industrial world of Kiavagama. The future struggle against the Cult will depend on the results of his search, which is the reason for his joining the rogue trader's retinue. So we need to bring him to Kiavagama. Yes, to fulfill his mission, Heinrichs must make his way to the industrial world Kiavagama and make planet fall as part of the rogue trader's retinue. That's all fine by me. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other things surrounding Kiavagama, and then we'll make planet fall. This dead world over here, just to make sure nothing's going to surprise us when we're busy on the planet's surface. So over to this dead world, what do you have to offer us? Begin a scan over here real quick. And nothing but XP. All right, sounds good. Which actually reminds me, am I not in a position to level up my party members? I believe I might be. I believe I might be. Ah, it's something that can wait until next session. Like I said, this week has been a wild one. It's thrown me, it's thrown me off for a loop. Uh, so I, I apologize for that. But I think we're okay as far as our skills and stuff are concerned. It'll allow me to take a look at everything uh, that's available as far as options are concerned and make it a smoother uh, operation when I actually level everybody up. But uh, let's continue our exploration over here. This planet Atle. What do you have here? This dwarf planet is marked on the Von Valencia's Trade Empire charts as Atle and serves as a backup source of water for the habitable worlds in the neighboring systems. Due to the abundance of bacteria proliferating in the Atle hydrosphere, the extraction of ice was stopped half a century ago. But much to your officer's surprise, the augurs detected an unidentified mining rig deep under the ground. Presumably, the excavation is aimed at extracting clay minerals near the planet's core, enriched with iron and other metals. Send a scouting party with Abelard, or we could contact the Extractium's Vox station. No, send a scouting party. Go forth with Abelard. Failed. Damn. The transmission cuts off as soon as the scouting party reaches the extraction zone. All subsequent attempts to contact them fail, presumably because they were eliminated by the Extractium's defense systems. Okay, I suppose ultimately we could try to contact the box station, or we could destroy the unidentified Extractium with an aimed shot. No, no, no. Oh god, how do I feel about making contact in this system of all systems? Let's try it. Let's try it. Failed. The Voxmaster reports your message was sent and received. Several hours pass, but there is no reply. Alright, if they will not reply, then uh, they will die. Destroy the unidentified Extractium with an aimed shot. All that remains of the Extractium is a handful of craters. The Augur crew scans the surface one more time and finds the parts of the Extractium machine scattered all over the area. That was uh, unsanctioned mining operations 
on a potentially dangerous planet within my empire's bounds. Unacceptable behavior. They wouldn't even respond to my hails, so unacceptable, they deserved it. Let's head on over to this artificial object. I'm a little concerned because uh, that looks like a string of extremely dangerous ships, and uh, I'm not sure how this is going to play out. But we must investigate. Hopefully we're okay over here. Oh no. A loading screen means trouble. I can see crimson lights in the void. And trouble it is. I mean, I was like, I know what I'm looking at. I recognize them as ships. I recognize them as ships for sure. But why were they... Why were they marked like that? <laughs> no other space battle has been marked in that way. So that's an extremely curious decision. This is a lot of enemy ships. Thankfully, they all seem to be relatively weak. 80 HP, 50 HP... Uh, yeah, 50 HP across the board, except for this ship and this ship. Okay, very well, very well. What can we actually do? Who should we single out first, or should we single anybody out first? I'm down over here. Turn around, face this way. We could lance and try and eliminate some of the weaker ones at first, I suppose. Uh, if I do come up to here, can't fire at anybody. I don't think they're within reach. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, I can pop my torpedoes, and I could pop a lance shot, I imagine, to hit buddy back there yeah sure i don't think any of our other abilities are worth using just quite yet what order are we moving in let's see let's cancel our orders over here just to make sure i don't mistakenly move where i don't actually want to this guy's next followed by this guy then this guy then this guy then this guy not that it matters it's all our ship and then all of their ships just kind of curious as to what the uh, the move uh, orders actually are Get up to there, lance and torpedoes facing up this way to intercept whatever we can. Sure, I could try and scan for weaknesses, I suppose, up over here and hope that we uh, get lucky in terms of which way it's facing, but I, I have doubts. Come on. Oh, hey, you know what? <laughs> that actually worked out. That's kind of funny. I think we should hit from that side if I if I fire from here. So let's go for it. Fire the launch that was all right. Cleared the shields over here, so there's that. Let's go ahead and pop our torpedo facing this direction as well, and that should be able to hit uh, any, basically anything that goes through this way. So that should be all well and good. I'm going to end our turn there, I think, and see what the enemy gets up to. That last space battle um, with the Drukari has me on edge. That was uh, that was rough. I loved it. Don't get me wrong, I loved it, but it has me on edge. And this is good too. For every turn, these guys can't hit us. They're going to take some damage. So uh, if we keep our distance, that actually might work in our favor as well. That did a fair bit of damage to our shields, eh? There's a follow-up shot coming through. A little bit of damage. Not that bad. Not that bad. Buddy over here is coming through. I, I wish they would clump up a little bit. Because if they do clump up, then the torpedo could maybe damage a bunch of them. But I'm sure they're smart enough to know not to do that. Oh! Uh, okay. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> He's launched his own torpedoes. Fair enough. We should be able to dodge past that. No problem. These guys are actually very nicely clumped up. Stay put for me, please. Ah, no, 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 no. Okay, no surprise there. I, uh... I asked for that. Ooh. Immaterium Surf to teleport behind us. Very cheeky, very cheeky. Is that all you're gonna do? Still your turn, buddy. Still your turn. You good? There we go. Alright, he just he just needed a second to think about it. Now, how do I want to do this? Cause if I hit if I hit one of them. Oh god damn it, I keep forgetting it's one click to That's really annoying. That's extremely frustrating. It's always double click to confirm move, except for when you're actually going to hit something. That doesn't that doesn't make it that's inconsistent. That's inconsistent, because I wanted to see if I would cause damage to both things, or if I should stop next to them and then hit the whatever. It's fine, we'll be fine, but that kind of inconsistency is a UX issue. Normally I take the blame for when I make a silly mistake. That that I'm gonna say that one's on the game. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you can't because it, it's a move order. I was trying to give a move and attack, if you will. It should be a second click involved, as far as I'm concerned. But hey, that's uh, fine. I'll take the blame. I'll take the blame. I'm just agitated. How do I take care of both of these guys now? Um, I mean, hey, at least we caused some damage, right? There's that. It could have been a lot worse, I suppose. I guess. Beautiful opportunity wasted. If I creep up this way, I should be able to. Nope. I have to actually creep up this way, I suppose. To be able to hit you with 
both sets of weapons, and then hopefully I'll be able to skate past this thing. I don't know. Hmm. Can I actually come up to here instead? Yeah, that should be okay. I, I just want to make sure we're outside of its turning radius, basically. And if these guys have to kind of move uh, further away from us uh, before... Basically, if I force them to have to move further away rather than attack us, I'll feel a little bit better because uh, they'll they'll take damage, right? Because they don't attack us. So can I get even further away? Uh, yes, but I have to come up to here to hit you twice. That sounds good to me. This guy's a bit more softened up, but we have the weak spot over here, so we may as well take advantage of that. Let's creep up to there. Uh, no opportunity for a lance, unfortunately. That's fine. Let's go ahead and do this. Still kind of kicking myself over that torpedo there. What a beautiful opportunity wasted. I'll take the blame for it. I'll take the blame for it. Still a bummer either way. Fire away. That should be the end of this ship. Down you go. Excellent. And you know what? Vindication. Vindication. The collateral damage from that explosion actually caused a lot of hurt to this uh, infidel raider. So that's that's fine. You know what? That's fine. That worked out for me. I'll take that. Uh, what do I want to do, though, now? Do I want to keep chasing these guys, or do I want to try and pull away a little bit and then loop around? Let's. If I if I come up here, Avalard, can you use new heading to allow us to turn back in next turn? I think so. Let's try that, because then I think what'll happen is... Uh, yeah, there's new heading. What'll happen is these guys will be forced away from us for the most part, and they'll probably have to take some damage, and that might actually eliminate this Infidel Raider unless it's able to fire backwards with its uh, apostate lance, right? Which it might be able to do, but uh, hey, we'll find out. Let's use a Warp Wave on this Iconoclast Destroyer as well, just to get it to turn around a little bit. Yeah, sure, could have been better, but I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. And uh, end our turn there. Still absolutely kicking myself over that torpedo. Whatever, it's fine. <laughs> Alright, buddy, here's coming a little bit closer. Is he going to shoot? He is. And he's going to land a hit as well. We're fine, though. Not that bad. Broke too soon. A bit more damage done there, but we're still okay. Buddy over here is going to pull away and probably take damage from not being able to fire at us. I'll be very happy if that works out. Come on, please. Yes! You know what? That was wonderful. <laughs> Genuinely extremely pleased that that worked out. Another Immaterium Surf there. These guys are densely packed, but we don't have a torpedo on hand right now, unfortunately. And it seems as though after uh, the Immaterium Surf, there's a momentary uh, pause as the AI tries to figure out what to do. I, I assume that's what's going on. Dang, we could have just landed on Kiavagama. We could have just left this for later. But I the curiosity got the best of me. Curiosity got the best of me. Okay, are you going to be able to close the gap? Or are you going to take damage? What's going to happen here? Or are you going to stay put? Thinking. Thinking. Not sure what to do. Okay. Our turn. So. How do I want to play this? How do I want to play this? We are able to turn a fair bit, but not by enough to actually, like, ping anybody with a lance or anything like that, right? Um, I could come all the way up to here and then pop torpedoes. Should be able to hit somebody if we do that effectively. This guy is still not going to be able to reach us, so he should die because of the uh, self-inflicted wounds that happen every so often. And once we get around there, yeah, we launch our torpedo, should be able to hit something, and then come back around and hit these guys with our uh, with our guns. Unfortunately, just a little too far away right now. But there's not much we can do about that. I'm wondering if I want to, like, restart shields or something. If we do that, we get stuck in place, don't we? Starship's movement is immediately halted. Yeah. And we can only use this during the push phase of movement. Which some of you were suggesting is maybe with regards to our distance over here, which might be correct. That's why we have multiple colors of, uh, of, of movement pips, I guess. But uh, now is not the time, I think, to experiment with that. Why don't we go ahead and just creep on up to, uh, to here. Yeah. Launch the torpedo down like so. And... Uh, and, and hang tight until next turn to, to get some additional damage out. I'm tempted to actually trigger new heading once more. That might allow us to turn a bit better as these guys move past us. Maybe actually chase them with some of our uh, macro batteries or maybe the lance. But uh, for the time being, let's end our turn and see what these guys get up to. You're going to hit us, obviously. Yeah, no surprise there. But we have plenty of HP. We, we're okay right now. We're okay right now. The Drukari were causing a lot of damage per hit. These guys, not so much. But now I'm starting to wonder if the torpedo is uh, a little out of position. 
seeing how far that guy got. This guy should be destroyed. Oh, is he gonna get close enough? No way. No way. Damn it. That's okay. Slight miscalculation on my part. He's gonna take care of himself. We just have to increase our distance. That's all. And this guy's definitely gonna get a shot in if he decides to move. Or it's possible that uh, the turn after using the Immaterium Surf or whatever it's called, they're kind of stuck in place. That seems to be the case. Maybe. We'll see what the other Icon Iconoclast Destroyer does. Who, by the way, doesn't seem to take damage unless they're actually hit. Good to know. Oh, you know, he, he looks stuck in place as well. Again, folks, just as a reminder, this is an alpha build, so let's keep that in mind when we look at situations like this and, and, and wonder what's going on. This is an alpha build after all, but it's our turn now. More specifically, it's our torpedo's turn. Uh, I suppose we dive into this bad boy over here. Even though he's stationary, he will need eliminating, so uh, yeah, I guess we go for it. See, I wonder, if I come up to here and I, and I detonate instead... 48 damage. I believe the damage output is the same. Shield's going to absorb some, obviously. So let's just go straight for you. And what did that do? Not a lot. Got a nice bit of HP left. Let's try and scan for weaknesses. I should have probably done that first. Oh, I can't. Why can't I? Scan weaknesses. Well, that's strange. Do you not have weaknesses? That doesn't make any sense. All right, leave it be for the time being then, and uh, let's just see what we want to do here. I could pull around this way. Can I lance you? Nope. If I come around this way, I should be able to lance. Yes. So lance, and then hit you with the uh, dorsal macro cannons as well, then pull around and hit you with the... Uh, with the, which one? Starboard or port? I, c I can't visualize. There we go. Port. I don't know why it throws me off, but yes, let's go ahead and do this first. Again, we're moving a bit closer to this guy, so he's not going to die just quite yet, but that's okay, because eventually, inevitably, he will. Let's deal with this destroyer first. Lance, let's go for it. Quickly now, quickly now. Fire away. Very nice, beautiful. And then we can uh, go ahead and fire like this as well. Beautiful stuff. And you know what? You know what? I wonder if... Rather than looping in, I wonder if I shouldn't loop out and do this instead. Just so that this guy, if he moves, he moves away from us. This guy's moving away from us as well. And uh, I'm sure we're close enough for this guy to hit us, but uh, who knows, right? It, it, basically, if we move this way, he has to go up and around. Whereas if we move this way, he just has to keep going straight. So this might cause that guy some trouble uh, down the line. So let's move over to here and pop this volley in this direction. Let's go for it. Fire away. Very good stuff. Not bad at all. All right. And do I want to turn somebody around? Like, here, why don't we try this? Why don't we try using Warp Wave on Buddy here? If he turns this way, if he turns clockwise, it'll be convenient for him. But if he turns counterclockwise, it might work out for us. But, oh, hey, what do you know? What are the chances? Things never work out for me. I'm sure he's still able to hit us because he'll have his lance, I'm fairly confident, but uh, it makes it harder for him to catch us if we keep going this way, right? So that actually worked out very nicely. End our turn there, see what the AI does. You're gonna roll away, you're gonna try looping back. Come on, take some damage. Beautiful, love to see it. Down over here, yeah, I knew he's gonna get his shot, and that's fine. He's gonna try looping back to catch us as well, but he had to go a bit further out. What about you, what are you gonna do? I guess they're stuck stationary. All right, not exactly how I would have liked to uh, have played this out. Makes it a bit easier than I was uh, anticipating, but I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. I don't think they would have beat me anyway. Like, we have 200 plus HP still. I would have played this very differently if they were active, right? Obviously, I wouldn't have put myself in such a prime position for getting picked off, but uh, but but I would have obviously played it differently if they were active and, and, and working. Uh, let's try and finish that guy off as we... Uh, skate by him though because obviously we will need to uh we will need to eliminate them still so how do we do this let's go ahead and hit you with this shot can we hit you with the dorsal macro battery as well we can let's start with this because it's more likely to maybe eliminate him so let's fire away come on now oh come on now finish him off give me a righteous fury come on 
the annoyance is that now I'll have to loop back and deal with him as opposed to just leave him be. Uh, let's go ahead and, and skate on down to here, I suppose. I could lance from there, right? I'm trying to figure out if I want to launch torpedoes now or if I wait until later. From here, torpedoes will not be able to hit this guy because the turning radius is too, uh, too large, I believe. If I move up and I lance, then I could continue moving up I guess why why not move up all the way? Scan for weaknesses. Oh, cancel. Don't want to move. Simply scan for weaknesses. There we go, on that side. Okay. So here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and move up to here. We'll lance him. Then we'll move up to here and fire from that side and see if we can't get uh, get that weak side. Even though, truth be told, eliminating the shield is probably more, uh, more valuable. All right, let's try it. Lance away. Hope for the best. Increase our distance to the other ships as well. Decent bit of damage there. Got rid of the shields, but nothing else. And again, I wonder. He's all the way up there. He should be too far away. He should be too far away as well to hit us. So that's good. Do I want to make his life easier by moving closer to him? How much is that weak spot really worth, right? Increases damage by 30% for two turns. I mean, geez, that's not bad. Not bad, but I don't even know if I have that angle. You know what? Let's creep up here, and then later on we can we can drift over this way. So we're moving straight ahead. No, we're not, because that doesn't make any sense, because then we can't hit him with our uh, broadside. I only have the port one available, right? Because I fired at this guy. Okay, well, hey, you know what? That makes our decision-making a bit easier, because that means I have to do this for the port side barrage. Yeah, sounds good. I was just wondering if I wanted to use the torpedo up there. Nope. We'll keep the uh, torpedoes on hand, and we'll use them next turn. Fire away. No shields here. Should do a decent bit of damage. Not too bad. And let's go ahead and, what, turn some of these guys around? No, that's not going to help us. There's a higher likelihood of it hurting us rather than helping us. So we'll leave it at this, end our turn there, and see what these guys do. Again, hopefully both of these uh, raiders will take a bit of damage because they can't hit us. Ah, you're gonna hit us, aren't you? No, you're not. But that didn't cause any damage. What about you? Can you self-destruct from a lack of attacking me? Yes, you can. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. That was that was great. That was great. Excellent. These guys aren't gonna do anything, unfortunately. This gives us some time to cool down, mellow out. Only one active enemy vessel. This isn't going to be a problem. We'll be fine. We'll be just fine. Folks, as always, if you've been enjoying this series, please don't hesitate to keep letting me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. I didn't mention this at the beginning of this session, but we've got a bit of a lull over here, so I figured I'd mention it right now. It does make a very big difference in just letting me know what people are enjoying on the channel, letting me know what I should do more or less of, letting me know how I should adjust my approach, etc., etc. So, if you uh, want to make sure this uh, alpha playthrough continues, a like and a comment goes a very long way in ensuring exactly that as I launch another battery from the port side onto this Iconoclast Destroyer, followed by a dorsal battery, followed by us leaving, and maybe... Ah, are you for real? I was really hoping we get to hit this as well, but it's just out of reach, eh? Yeah, indeed it is. That's okay, that's okay. We'll deal with it later. Uh, but yes, let's fire away with the uh, port side battery first. Let's go. Nice and easy. Come on, you can't miss at this range. Let's go with the dorsal as well. Far away. Yeah, okay, another miss. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and do what? Let's pull up to here, I suppose. If I launch torpedoes, I might be able to hit this guy. He'll be able to hit us as well next turn, but hey, it is what it is. Can we lance him? Yes, we can. Okay, excellent. So we'll roll up. We'll hit him with a lance. We'll launch our torpedo, and then we'll wait until next turn to actually uh, take care of this destroyer. Cool. Sounds good. Sounds excellent. Fire away, fire away. Come on now. There we go. Good damage. All to the shields, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and force this guy to rotate. And if we're lucky, nice. He'll go that way, so he might not be able to hit us next turn. I have my doubts, but hey, one can hope. And let's launch our torpedo facing this way. So either it can eliminate this destroyer, or it can loop back towards this one with the help of Argenta's... Uh, torpedo control, or it can go straight towards this one if he kind of turns around this way. We'll see. This opens up the most options, I think, as we uh, also get new heading and end our turn there. Cool. 
can't believe he got to shoot me. <laughs> I haven't got the ranges memorized or anything. It's fine. It's not the end of the world. Ooh. Macro cannons too, eh? Actually hitting the uh, torpedo? Wow. All right. Okay. That's fine. Now, who does the torpedo hit? Maybe this guy. Should be able to eliminate him. They do, like, what, 42 damage, right? So if I come in from this side with Argenta's torpedo control, I should be able to eliminate him. Uh, move forward, macro this guy, loop back around, and then lance and macro this destroyer until it's destroyed. Sounds simple enough. In theory. In theory. I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be just fine. Real shame about these destroyers not being active. Would have made this a bit more of a uh, threatening battle. <laughs> but hey, the Emperor protects. The Emperor protects. This is his work. Alright, torpedo time. Yeah, so we can get pretty far up, and then uh, Argenta will need to use her torpedo control to just finish the job, I suppose. So click one and click two, because we do not have a reach with our detonation. A, mm, not gonna, not gonna experiment. Let's move you up to there. Make sure our path is clear. That's the torpedo done, and the torpedo's turn. Argenta torpedo control onto this torpedo, and uh, yeah, hit the infidel raider. Beautiful. I'm tremendously pleased. All right, next up, this guy. So he's got his weak spot, no shields. We'd probably be best off chasing after that. So let's head on up to uh, here, I guess, uh, and finish him off. That really should do the trick. I guess I could use my dorsal instead. Ah, starboard. Let's go. Starboard. Always in my head here it is starboard. Fire away. Beautiful stuff. Eat some damage, unfortunately, because we're so close. But that's fine, because I wanted the... Uh, the, the, the turning radius that brings us right back to this guy as quickly as possible. Not in Lance range, unfortunately. Mm. Oh, what are you going to do? We'll creep up, use this, and slowly make our way down. And hopefully between a couple of Lances and some macro batteries, he'll be taken care of. That's our turn done. I'm sure we have enough scraps to repair the damage done to our hull there. Don't worry, I was fully aware of what I was doing there. Wasn't an accident. 100% intentional. I'm not upset. <laughs> Gotta, gotta, gotta gather some battle scars every once in a while, right? That's what makes you look cool. Tells a story. Each scar tells a story. All right, let's go ahead and creep up to here. Go ahead and lance away. We'll pop some torpedoes and stuff too, because he's clearly not moving. The damage, torpedo straight ahead. And uh, I wish I could like fire from all sides, you know? Let's do this first. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on. God damn it. I just need a couple of Righteous Furies. That's all I need. But a dorsal. Come on. It's gonna be the torpedo, isn't it? And yeah, we just we just can't turn enough to actually get a port side as well. How cool would that be, though, if you could, like, zigzag and get uh, both, uh, both broadsides? But let's creep up to here, sure. Torpedo's gonna finish the job. Might eat some damage from that as well. Oops. It's fine. Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. But this guy's done for. He has, like, less than uh, half the HP that other ship did when it got hit by a torpedo. God, the torpedoes are so cool. There's just something absolutely gorgeous uh, in, 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 in the explosion and having it happen at the uh, the end of a torpedo's uh, a move, I guess. I, I'm actually not sure what the radius is of that uh, AoE, but we'll find out. For 167, there's the explosion and no damage to us. Nice. Excellent. Battle is over. A battle is won. I, I should have known this was going to be a space battle. Like, it looked like... I mean, it looked like what it was, but, you know. Oh. This is the artificial object? Well, that... Oops. Look, it's fine. It was fun. Repair our hull. We, like I said, we have plenty of, uh, of scraps. And let's head on over to Kiavagama. Finally time. It's finally time. Let's see what it's got. The only option is to uh, make landfall, so let's go for it. And of course, we have to take ourselves and Heinrichs, as previously uh, discovered. And uh, I guess I'm glad things went down the way they did with Adira when they did, because now I'm at least comfortable with and familiar with Heinrichs uh, for when, you know, things get real, kind of dangerous. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. I've been waiting for this for so long. I'm really excited to see what actually happens. By the way, just to clarify, this guy is actually a companion you can get in the final build of the game. I've seen many of you ask about it, and yes, absolutely. Available companion. 
it's also been pointed out that Idira is the only one not uh, showcased in this uh, <laughs> in this visual, and so it's okay for her to be dead. That's been mentioned in the comments as well previously. I thought it was rather dark, but hey, yeah, good point, I guess. <laughs> Strange to have her be the only one excluded from this uh, image, but it is what it is. All right, here we go. Time for Kiavagama. Definitely going to get uh, assaulted during landfall, right? Heinrichs frowns as his eyes sweep over the Manifactorum's dark halls. No solemn ceremony, no personal meeting with Magi. I fear we are too late, and we won't be dealing with clandestine heretics after all. Binary areas of alarm stream out of Pascal's Vox synthesizer. In their neurotic, broken rhythm, you sense a call to arms and a warning of danger. Remind me, what is your mission on Kiava Gamma? I assumed I would conduct an investigation and track down traces of the Cult of the Final Dawn. I believe I can discard that plan now. Both the incident with the scrap code and the manner in which we are forced to land on Kiavagama indicate that the situation has taken a turn for the worse. Nevertheless, I must use this opportunity to, and try to determine what the cult was doing on an industrial world and what specifically interested them on a planet full of sacred machines and servants of the Omnissaya. First, we must find someone who can tell us what's been going on here. Anrix pauses, straining to hear something. If... That is, there is anyone left here to speak to. Any suggestions for how to proceed? To start, let's look around and find out why the arrival of the rogue trader did not elicit the usual fuss. To speak plainly, I would not count on a warm welcome at this rate. Better keep your weapon at the ready. It always is, Heinrichs, it always is. We'll learn nothing by standing here. Let's go. The interrogator nods, continuing to stare into the surrounding gloom. All right. All right, all right. So I guess we've uh, brought Heinrichs to Kiavagama, so nothing more to worry about there. Secrets of the cult, is that right? Yes. Looks as though... Looks as though I can actually speak to uh, Heinrichs as well. Should I have done that before we made landfall? Or planet fall, I suppose I should say? Strange activity has been detected on an industrial world. Activity that matches intelligence received by the Inquisition's interrogator. It is vital to explore the location and find someone there who can provide more information, whether willingly or under duress. Fair enough. Let's take a look at the map real quick. This is going to be a big one, isn't it? This is going to be a big one. Do we see anything right ahead of us? No. Some goods? Sure. <laughs> that scared the crap out of me for a second there. Just want to make sure we're not about to get ambushed. I want to be the one doing the ambushing. It's worked out very nicely for us in the past. Do not want to lose out on that advantage. Up to these goods over here. Uh, let's go ahead and try our tech use. Pascal's been quite well trained. Excellent. Melta charge acquired. Some depleted batteries and holy machine oil packed as cargo. We got so much cargo, man. We got so much cargo. I cannot wait to meet somebody to trade with. All right. Some things to investigate up here. What's going on over here? Corrupted servitor. Mm. Let's keep our distance for the time being. Let's investigate the... Uh, the goings-ons around these parts first, just to get a better understanding of circumstances. So again, I want to be wary of uh, what might be waiting for us up here. Cassius says, Your mind is swathed, swathed in blue-gray smoke, Master Van Kellogg's. A heavy color. Or heavy thoughts, I presume. You're a dangerous person, Lady Orcelio. All navigators are, but your abilities place you in a special category. Heinrichs is not a fan of our navigator. <laughs> Unsurprisingly so, perhaps. Alright, what's going on over here? The massive cogwheel is constantly pushing along the colossal gear system, which fades into the haze. Alright, and what about up here? You hear dull thuds from within the thick metal, as if some process, endlessly pounding, runs in the depths of these pipes. Very well. Just wanted to get a glimpse of what's going on up there. Because we know the other side has a corrupted servitor, so I don't know if that's the uh, safest place to, to, to proceed towards. Up over here, we have an agility check to climb on top of this uh, structure here, I assume. Maybe. Keep exploring. Surely, but slowly but surely, sorry. What do we got? What do we got? 
could cause for concern. Looks relatively clear. Creeping up this way here. Yeah, nothing to worry about here, it seems like. Okay, good stuff. We'll come back and do that, uh, that athletics check later, I think. Some goods here. A tech priest. Ooh, perhaps someone to speak to. Doesn't say corrupted. So he might be safe. Hunched over a book. Reading. Trying to, trying to get a clear read on that. Because the, uh, the symbol of the Adeptus Mechanicus and the symbol of, like, the Heretics uh, is relatively similar, if memory serves me correctly. Right? Or am I misremembering? <laughs> I can't remember for the life of me right now. Pascal, you got the same thing, right? Yeah, he's got the same thing. That might be a friendly. That might be a friendly. So we'll go ahead and engage with that tech priest. See what goods there are up over here. There's a bit of loot here. There's a bit of loot there. We have this uh, agility check as well behind us, right? Curious if uh, if we should do that first. Just to see what's going on up over here. If there's uh, value to being up here. Wouldn't just be able to get up there for no good reason, I imagine. And then once we deal with that, we also still have to consider uh, Buddy back over here. Where'd he go? This guy. Well, we know he's there in the shadows. Somewhere. Folks, a little creeped out. A little creeped out by Kiyavagama. This is uh, going to be intense, but this is also going to have to wait until next time. Who knows when a battle is going to break out, and a battle is easily going to last 30 to 45 minutes, and we're very close to the hour mark that I try to keep these two. So with this baller music in the background, I think it's time to call it a session. We'll start next time leveling everybody up, making sure we're actually prepared for the uh, situation ahead. And then we'll go ahead and engage with this tech priest and see if anything is uh, revealed to us or if we get immediately attacked. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this session. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. As always, it makes a very big difference. Just let me know what people are enjoying on the channel. And as always, of course, a, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. They'll keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.